Hi everyone, Chef Ron here and we are just about ready to start this week's episode of the Chef Ron Lock Show. But before we do that, I wanted to let you know who is going to be here this week. We got riding up in town our resident biker, Smokey Harley Davidson's in the house. And he's going to let you know what we'll be making this week and present to you our fantastic ingredients in the best way that he possibly can. And then after that, I'll come in and I'll show you how to put it all together and put together a fantastic presentation that I'm sure you will love. And I'll probably take a little taste of that as well at the end. In fact, I'm sure I probably will. I also hope that we can offer you our three E's that we always try to do on every episode. That's a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of education, and a little bit of enlightenment. So, I need to start heating up this kitchen and getting this show going, so let's start up the Chef Ron Lock Show! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Harley Davidson, Smokey. Hey, bros and sisters, it's Smokey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I'm back again for another episode of the Chef Ron Lock Show, and uh, I'm getting my debt paid off. I'm getting my debt paid off. Uh, maybe I've only got a few more shows. We'll see. Unless you guys really like what I'm doing here. I don't know why you would. I'm just an average guy here just trying to pay a debt and help a friend out. But if you like if you're liking me on here, you know, let 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 Chef Ron know and um, maybe he'll let me come on a few more times and uh, I can help out too. I'm actually kind of liking this. I'm actually kind of liking this a little bit. It's really uh, really have been a lot of fun. Um, to do these shows, um, I've, I've watched. I've watched myself on on the screen, you know. And uh, <laughs> the first time, I, I just had to kind of laugh, you know, because I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just trying again to help out a friend. But uh, you know, it, it, I'm learning some stuff here. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a learning experience, and I really like it. You know, my my biker buddies laugh about it because they're. They, they just, you know, you cooking, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but I'm learning stuff, you know, I actually am planning on making the crock pot beer chicken, that first episode that I was helping Chef Ron on, because it's got beer, it's got beer in it, <laughs> and so I'm going to make that, and then I'm going to have the rest of the beer because why would you want to throw it away because you're not using the whole thing well yeah you are using the whole bottle of it well hey you know what I'll bring out two bottles then and we'll say it's two bottles and then I'll just make an excuse and have one for me I think that's a good idea well the Davidson family is doing really great the last time I was on the show here I just became a grandpa my daughter had a son and I had to get in here and get out to see her and all that. And I told you that I would let you know what we named my grandson when I would come back on the show again. Well, we went through a whole barrage of names, you know. Uh, you know, My daughter was going to call him Smokey. And I'm like, you don't want to do that. That's a nickname. That's my, that's my nickname. And she, and she wanted to have something in his name that carried it over from me. And so then they were going to name him Harley. And I'm like, you don't want a Harley Jr.? I said, and, well, and I said, the only good thing is that your last name isn't Davidson. It's her married name. And, it, you know, it's not a weird name or, or a, a bad name. So it would have been okay. But uh, I just didn't want a junior running around. You know, you get in a room. If any of you guys out there that have been juniors, when you were growing up, you know, you'd be in a room and somebody would say your name, 
and you both, you and your dad would both look, unless they gave you a nickname. Well, that's why I got Smokey from, is because that's my dad's name was Harley as well. And so I didn't want to do the Harley 3 or the Harley Jr. or whatever. So we finally decided to go ahead and call him Michael. And the reason we're calling him Michael, because Michael's my middle name. That's right. Something you didn't know, did you now? See, I'm opening up to you all now here on the Chef Ron Lock Show. I'm getting more comfortable, and so I'm feeling a little more charitable about giving more information out about me. So I'm not going to tell you how much money I make, though. <laughs> no, <laughs> not going to do that. No, no, no. But anyway, um, which wouldn't matter. It ain't that much anyway. Trust me, it's not that much. But anyway, a little too much information. A little TMI, as they call it, you know. But anyway, his name is Michael, and he is just cute as a bug, and uh, I got him this little Harley, little toy, and I know he's, he's only three months old, but, you know, he'll grow into it, you know, it's a little cast, die cast toy, it's a bike, you know, kind of looks like his grandpa's bike, so, anyway, so that's what's going on with our family. And then what else? And then also I've been working on my leather craft. Now, I don't know if I've talked to you guys about this or not, but I do leather craft. Uh, that's how I make a lot of my income. And so I, I, I do a lot of that at craft fairs and uh, shows and things. My wife does some other craft things as well, and we do we get a table as a team, and we sell our stuff, and that's how we su supplement our income down here. And so... I've been working doing a lot of that. In fact, this band right here, you see this here? I made this. I actually made this band from scratch. Now, it's supposed to be a watch band, but you know what? There ain't no watch in there now, is there? Nope, no watch. The watch broke. The watch broke, so I need to get a new watch, or I just don't need to care what time it is, one of the two. But you know how it is. Money is tight out there. And so, but I like the band. It looks fine without the watch, you know. But anyway, money's tight, and you know, right now, you know, I got I got too much time on my hands. It is anyway. I don't need to know what time it is all the time. So anyway, although I'm getting a rolling thing here behind the camera from some guy, the producer, I guess, that's saying I need to get going here, and we need to start telling you what the recipe is and what's going into all this. So I will be quiet. I'll save my leather craft story for another time, but let's tell you what we're making today, all right? We are making for you Crock-Pot Beef Stroganoff. Yeah, beef. That's some good stuff. That is some good stuff. And we're going to have a lot of fun with this because guess what? We've got alcohol in it. That's right. No beer, though. No beer, but I believe there's some red wine some red wine that's going in this. Now, I'm not a big wine drinker or anything like that. I'm, I'm, that's a little too foo-foo for me. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with people drinking wine and such. I'm just not, I don't have a taste for it, really. But if it's the only thing there and I feel like I want to kick back a little bit, yeah, you know what? I've been known to have a glass of red wine once in a while, too. So I don't know. We'll see what happens here in the ingredient presentation. And I hope that maybe we'll, uh, we'll leave it for Chef Ron. Probably be a good idea. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our ingredients. And first, we're going to go ahead and tell you what's going into the crock pot for the beef stroganoff, the first part of this. All right, and then we're going to show you the sauce ingredients here in a second. Let's see if I can do this. It's getting better on this a little bit here. All right, so first off here, we've got one to two pounds of stew meat and you can get that and just you can cube that up you can cube that up or you can buy it already cubed up as well all right get to that we've got here eight ounces or a package of white mushrooms and you can use other kinds of mushrooms too if you want i wouldn't probably use psychedelic mushrooms unless you were <laughs> really wanting to have an ultimate experience with your meal or something like that. I, would, I wouldn't do that, though. And I'm sure these are not psychedelic mushrooms that Chef Ron has right here. And, and, and not that I would really know anything about that. No, 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 I'm not, no, no. So anyway, 
you just go ahead and use the regular kind you'd buy in the store. All right. Next here we've got a cup and a half of beef broth. All right. Then we've got here, uh, let me see if I can get this now. Chef Ron did one of these mixing things in together kind of scenarios. Um, there's one tablespoon of marjoram. I guess that's how you say it, marjoram? All right. Yeah, I'm getting a nod over here in the corner here. Then um, one teaspoon of thyme. All right. No thyme. <laughs> and lastly, we've got a bay leaf that we've thrown in there as well. All right. That's your seasonings there. Speaking of seasonings, we've got here a half a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper mixed in there. We've got here, uh, this is two tablespoons of a Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, all right. Then we've got here one cup, or I guess it's a cup, but one medium onion that's been chopped. We've got here three tablespoons of minced garlic, or you can get three cloves and mince those up too. And then we've got here, did I say salt? Yes, I said salt and pepper already. I'm telling you brain cells are going. Lastly, it must be the fumes from this red wine I'm going to introduce here in a second. And lastly, we've got here a half a cup of red wine. Hmm. This looks really good. You think he'd mind if I had a sip? You really? Should I go ahead and do it? Should I? Should I go ahead and drink this a little bit? You think he'd get mad? He wouldn't notice if a little bit was gone. Yeah. No. No. Ow. Oh, all right. I'll be good today. I'll be good. I'll be later. I gotta talk to Chef Ron about his recipe selection and what he's gonna have on here when I come on the next time. See if he can work a deal for me here or something. Anyway, that's what we go up going on in the cooking process of the first stage of the beef stroganoff. Let's show you now what's going into the sauce because we got more ingredients. Okay, now let's go and see what's going in that sauce. We've got here eight ounces of sour cream. We've got here two tablespoons of mustard. Uh, I look in here, it says it's a brown spicy mustard. Okay, so I guess that's what you're supposed to use. And then we've got here two tablespoons of flour, or I'm sorry, that is, yes, is, no, that's a, that's a quarter cup of flour. <laughs> I need to, I tell you with these glasses and everything on it, it's hard to read these little cue cards that's down here. That's a quarter cup of flour what do I know? I, I don't cook that much anyway, so, but it's a quarter cup anyway. And uh, last we've got here, a uh, half a cup of water, okay? So that's what we're dealing with here, and Chef Ron's going to come back here in just a moment. He's going to start getting this all together for you. These ingredients smell really, really, really good. I mean, really good. And I'm getting really hungry, so I'll tell you what. I think I'm going to mosey on on the bike and ride on out of here and uh, pick me up some, some food or something like that. I'd like to stay, but i got to go see my grandson and my daughter, so at any rate. All right, well, that's it. Chef Ron's going to be coming right up, and he's going to start putting this all together for you. And I will see you next time when I get here. It's always been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And this is Smokey saying... Keep the rubber side down and the shiny side up, and have a great day. Take care. Well, hi everyone, Chef Ron Lock here. How's everyone doing out there today? to you, applause to you, for coming and checking out another episode of the Chef Ron Locke Show. So glad you could make it with us today. We have a fantastic recipe for you, as we always do, and you know when Smokey is on, that means it's crock pot day, 
And Smokey loves the crock pot. Let it be known. Let it be known right now that Smokey loves crock potting. He has actually started. He actually started using a crock pot the other day, he told me. Now, he wouldn't tell you this on camera, but he actually made the creamy pork chops that we did a few weeks ago. And him and his old lady apparently really enjoyed them really enjoyed them so I want to thank Smokey for just coming on here I know he's paying off a debt to me and I just appreciate the fact that he's actually getting into this he told me off camera too that he's actually starting to enjoy coming on here and even if it wasn't for the debt he, he'd probably come on and do it now or once the debt was paid off he'd come on and do it so you know he, he's been a great great help he's been a great help to uh, introduce the ingredients and the little stories he tells us. I mean, he's a grandfather now. I mean, come on, you know, life's been good to him now. Life's been good, you know, and he is a perfect example of somebody who can take their life and change it around. So, you know, I, I always tell people too that, you know, you don't always think that just because something bad's happening to you at the moment that you can't learn from that and turn it around and be a mentor later on to others. And that's what he does. I have to applaud him for that. I really do. I think that's just amazing, you know. So, I mean, it's just, it's enlightening. It really is. It's great. All right, well, you know what? It is time. It is time to start our crock pot beef stroganoff. Easy and affordable. That's right. You know, there's nothing easier than making this, this beef stroganoff. I'm going to show you how to do this here in just a second. Basically, you're taking a few ingredients and you're putting them into this crock pot. You're cooking it for a while. You're going to put a few more ingredients in it. You're going to boil up some noodles, finish it all off, and boom, you are done. Now, I know that sounds simple, right? But it really is, and I'm going to show you through the whole steps here of the show how to go ahead and do that with this episode. So let's go ahead and get started right now. Let's go ahead and we're going to flip over to our hover camera is what we call it, and we're going to go ahead and start adding the ingredients and making this fantastic crock pot beef stroganoff. Let's do it now. Well, all right, here we are in front of our crock pot. Now we're going to go ahead and start adding the ingredients that's going to make up this fantastic crock pot beef stroganoff. And so let's go ahead and get started right now. Now, the first thing you want to go ahead and add is your cut up beef that we have here round steak, stew meat, whatever you want to use. And again, just make sure these are in one inch cubes, just like that. See that? All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add our dry ingredients first, and then we're going to go ahead and add the liquid in. All right. Uh, the big dry ingredients is what we're going to add in first. Um, so go, let's go ahead now and add in our mushrooms, like so. That's eight ounces of mushrooms. We're using white mushrooms. You can use baby ports. You can use all kinds of different kinds. All right. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in our onions, just like that. Just disperse them around a little bit. All right. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in our beef broth. Now we're going to start adding in some liquid. Okay. So just go ahead and add that in, just like that. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in our Worcestershire sauce. There we go. And now, next, we're going to add in our one half cup of red wine. I use a Shiraz. But you can use Cabernet or any other favorite red wine that you have. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add in our minced garlic. And you want to make sure you get all that minced garlic in there like that. Just like that. Well, without flicking it around like I'm just doing right there. Okay. All right, now it's time to add the marjoram and the thyme. There we go. And... Our salt and pepper, of course, we need to add that. And lastly, let's go ahead and add that one bay leaf, just like that. Now, that doesn't look like there's much liquid in there, but uh, we're going to be good. We're going to be good, trust me, because the meat and the onions and everything will cook down as this gets heated up. All right, so hold on. Let's go ahead and start this up. All right, and that's basically all you do. Now, it doesn't look like there's a lot of liquid when you see it at first because there 
isn't really a lot of liquid. There's enough on the bottom to really get things heated up. Now once the meat and the onions and the other ingredients start heating up more, you're going to create more liquid from those ingredients as well. So anyway, that's it. That's as easy as it is. We're going to go ahead now and put the lid on. Now. You can set this for two different temperatures depending on your time frames of how long you're going to be gone or how long you want to wait. You can do this on low for an eight to nine hours if you're going to be gone all day at work or something like that. Or you can do this for three to four hours on high if you're just going to run some errands or spend the afternoon at the beach or out in the yard or whatever fancies you as far as having a good time. So that's all we do. Let's go ahead and turn that on and we are all set to go. So, you can take that wine that you used for the recipe and pour yourself a nice glass of it as I have here and I'm going to enjoy myself for a little while. When we come back we have another step to do. We're going to make the sauce that makes this beef stroganoff fantastic. And In the meantime we're also going to go ahead and watch a mailbag segment. That's right, we have a mailbag segment waiting for you. One of our lucky viewers out there is going to get their letter picked and read on the upcoming segment here. They've asked myself or one of our cast members a question and we hold no bars in answering that for you. So let's go right now and see what's on the mailbag this week. Mailbag. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. This question is for me, Christopher Cub, and this is from Brian R. who lives in Rochester, New York. Now Brian asks me, he goes, I love your fashions that you wear when you're on the Chef Ron Lock show. He says, who do you have somebody that dresses you or do you do it yourself or and who buys your clothes for you do you do it yourself or do you have someone that does it for you well that's a good question Brian thank you for asking and thank you for the nice comment on my cotier selection that I have well actually I do my own clothing um, I, I pick it out I uh, Sometimes I do have someone that goes and purchases it for me, or I'll just purchase it on the internet if I see something that I really like. Um, I believe in fashion. I believe in doing something avant-garde. Um, I've, I've always beat to my own drum in anything I do, so I try to do something a little different, you know. Um, I mean, I just think that, you know, you should really be able to put a stellar fab outfit together and uh, really create something really spectacular, you know. So, um, you know... What I'm wearing right now, I mean, honestly, I just came from a event, a uh, Western event. This is not something. This is not something I would wear um, outside of a work function at all. So this is probably a bad example of of, 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 re, of responding to this question to you wearing this. But you've seen some of my other my other clothes that I've worn on the Chef Ron Lock show as well. And I think you know, like zebra prints and 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 fabrics and silks and and just really eye-popping contrasting colors I think are really bold statements about someone who's really just very positive and very confident with their life and I think clothing also re reflects the kind of person you are inside too I mean if somebody's always wearing black all the time you're either Johnny Cash or you're um, you pretty dark or goth you know that's why that's why the goth people wear black all the time because it's a very you know it's a very sucking sucking energy type of a color and so you know and you'll see a lot of really really good people like and you know I don't want to use the word angelic but I guess I will that wear a lot of white and a lot of light colors so there is some truth to that all you know so for me like I said I like to use I like to wear a little bit of each you know like I've got my peace sign here my medallions I like my medallions it's kind of a throwback to the 70s and I think that you know there's nothing wrong with a little nostalgia if you like that part of it. And also, you like my, my glasses that I have, you know, I try to be a little trendy and hairstyles and all kinds of stuff. You know, I kind of do a, I kind of try to throw myself back to sort of a maybe retro late 70s disco look in a way, but with a little bit more modernness to it as well. So anyway, but that's what really pretty much is all about in choosing 
my look and I do again choose my clothes and I do also um, you know find them myself I guess I should say um, I don't have anybody that does that for me so anyway I think I've run out of my answer here <laughs> and so I hope I've answered your question for you Brian thank you so much again if you have a question out there for either myself or Chef Ron or any of the other cast members that we have on the show please write to us at CRL at chefronlock.com. I'll say that again for you, please. That's CRL at chefronlock.com. Okay? And in the subject heading, just put mailbag and then just ask your question, and Chef Ron will go ahead and pick one or two questions that he feels would be good for either himself or one of us. And if you're one of the lucky ones that gets picked, we will like Brian did, we will go ahead and read your question and answer it on a segment of Mailbag. See how easy that is? All right, it's stellar fab. All right then, I'm going now and we are going to be going back to the Chef Ron Locke Show. All right, we're back and we are ready to go ahead and create our sour cream sauce that's going to be going into our crock pot beef stroganoff and it smells so wonderful here on the set here at the Chef Ron Lock Show. Before we get started, a couple things I just wanted to go ahead and just make note of that we hadn't made note of in the first segment. First of all, somebody in the audience, after we got out of the first segment, said to me, or they kind of yelled in from the audience, they said, uh, you forgot to stir, or don't you need to stir up your, your, your stuff before you go ahead and cook that? And that individual was correct. So we forgot to do that. So let's show you how it looks once you stir this up, because you're going to want to stir this up before you go ahead and start the cooking process. So this is how it looks when it's completely stirred up before you put your heat on and leave it to cook, okay? That's how it should look. We didn't do that step and uh, got a little too excited here in getting this ready for y'all and good thing we've got our audience out there that's paying attention and letting us know. So just wanted to let you know that. Also, I didn't even talk about this yet. I always talk about this when we get started. Crazy, I just love this recipe and I just lost all track of what I normally do here. You obviously want to make sure that your environment's clean and your hands are nice and clean before you start your cooking project, okay? Of course, I always say that in every episode. And now, as I always do, we're going to roll up our sleeves here and start heating up this kitchen a little bit more than it already is <laughs> because, because we're going to now make that fantastic sour cream sauce for our crock pot beef stroganoff. All right, let's go ahead and do that right now. Sleeves are up. Let's do it. We have in here our bowl of eight ounces of sour cream that we're gonna start off with, all right? And then just a few simple ingredients that you saw earlier that was introduced to you uh, by Smokey. We're gonna go ahead first and introduce our mustard here. Let's go ahead and add that. Now I prefer the Dijon for this recipe. You can use whatever you like. I would stay away from a honey or a sweet type of a mustard. I, stick with the Dijon or more of a spicy brown. That's what I would recommend for something like that. All right. All right. Next up here, let's go ahead and add in, see I need that. Let's add in our flour. Okay. Just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our water. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we're going to go ahead and and mix this up. You can just use a regular tablespoon if you like, or you can use spatula, whatever, you know, wooden spoon, whatever you're comfortable with. Just go ahead and mix this all up here, just like so. I'm going to try to keep this bowl steady so the camera can show you what we're doing here. You're just going to go ahead and fold this in. Of course, for all of you out there, folding is just bringing it from bottom to top and incorporating it into your sauce. And that's what we're doing right here. You can see that's what I'm doing. All right, just like that. You just want to get it mixed up. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to go ahead at this point, you want to extract a cup of your liquid from 
your beef stroganoff and include this with our sour cream sauce. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Be careful, it's hot. It's very hot. <laughs> I almost put my hand, grabbing for it, talking at the same time. When you're doing a cooking show like I'm doing, it's not like you're just in the kitchen and you're just concentrating on what you're doing. You're, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to talk to y'all and, and, and also, you know, create something here too. So sometimes you've got to really be careful. And I went to start grabbing for that, for that bowl, and I could feel the heat right away. Luckily, I, you know pulled back and grabbed it out of the top, but just be careful, that that liquid obviously is very hot, you want to handle that carefully. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead, again, folding, we're going to go ahead and incorporate this in, like so. Now, this will soup it up a little bit more, okay, this takes a second to go ahead, just incorporate this, see it doesn't take very long at all, just like that, all right. Now, just like that. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do right now is show you how we're going to incorporate this into our crock pot beef stroganoff. Okay, here we are in front of our beef stroganoff. This is at about three and a half hours on high, and you can see how wonderful that looks already, and it smells fantastic. Now, we're going to go ahead and incorporate the sour cream sauce, and you're just going to go ahead and add that in like this. Okay, then, and you want to make sure too, sometimes you'll get some extra, you're going to get some extra flour, and you really want that flour in, in there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and mix this up thoroughly. All right, the object here is you want to get this thickened and bubbly, and that will take about another 20 to 30 minutes on high, okay? So you want to make sure you do that. And that's all we're going to do. Very simple. Just mix this up like so. All right. Then all we're going to do then from there is just go ahead and put our top back on like so. And we are all set to go. All right. And that's it. It's as easy as that. Now we'll wait another 20 or 30 minutes until the sauce thickens and it gets a little bubbly and then we're good to go. Now the last thing you need to do at this point is to go ahead and prepare your egg noodles. That's going to be the bottom layer of this fantastic beef stroganoff and you just prepare those per the package directions. You're all set to go. I would probably prepare those about 15 minutes beforehand and uh, you should be good to go. Drain those, get those on plates and then you're ready to go ahead and start serving up your beef stroganoff. And we're going to go ahead and see exactly how this all turns out right after this important message. Stick around. On the next episode of the Chef Ron Lock Show. Well, hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> It's your buddy Chuck. It's your buddy Chuck. For all of you out there, thank you, thank you, thanks. For all of you out there who don't know who I am, my name is Chuck. Now, I did a cooking show for a couple of years up until about June of 2013. It was about a cooking cowboy. And uh, so, what am I doing here? If you've watched. <laughs> If you've watched this show enough, you know exactly when I do this what that means, right? Clean hands, right? Alright, so what do I always say? I always say make sure you clean your hands, make sure your environment's nice and clean because we don't want to cross-contaminate with any germs. Makes sense, right? Alright, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to roll up our sleeves here because we've got a yippee-eye-good <laughs> show for you today. That's what Chuck would say. So, let's get started here. Now, we're going to be doing for you here a very classic, simple... Well, all right, we are back for our final presentation of our Crock-Pot Beef Stroganoff. Now, you just saw in the clip a second ago, one way that you can do the beef stroganoff in the end and serve it up. You can go ahead and put your egg noodles in the crock pot with the beef stroganoff mixture and mix that all up like a casserole type if you will uh, and I know a lot of people that love 
that kind of mixture, kind of an all-in-one type of thing, and uh, it works really well. That's one way to serve your beef stroganoff. Another way is to, and we'll walk over to our presentation plate here, is to serve it on a bed of egg noodles, like you see right here on our plate. As you see, we put a row of egg noodles down on the bottom of this plate here, and then we've gone ahead and put the beef stroganoff on top of that layer of egg noodles. And then what we've done is we've taken some parsley and just kind of sprinkled it around a little bit, give it a little color, a little bit of flavor, a little bit of, of interest, a little bit of presentation. And then, in the end there, we went and dolloped a nice tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon, of sour cream in the middle of that. And I'm telling you what, that plate right there will feed a very hungry person out there. Or it's actually probably almost two servings, depending on how hungry or not hungry you are or how uh, big your stomach is or not. But at any rate, that is a plate. Now we're going to go ahead and take a taste test of this because I've just we've been cooking this all day here on the set and it just smells fantastic in here. I've been jonesing to go ahead and grab my fork and take a bite. So I'm going to shut up and we're going to go ahead and do this right now. Now I'm going to incorporate a little bit of everything here if I can. A little bit of egg noodle. Okay. There we go. Will it stay? <laughs> Will it not stay? See? <laughs> That's why, oh my, that's why you have, that is why you have a napkin. These noodles are wild, man. They just want to go. All right, let's quick, I'm going to shut up and quick eat this. Watch out. Mm. Mm. As I always tell you, in the flavors, and I'll work through this. The first thing you obviously taste are the egg noodles. Then you're going to take the sour cream. If you take that little dollop of sour cream, you can choose not to if you want. But that's what you'll taste next. And then you taste the beef and all these fantastic herbs and flavors that are in there. The thyme, uh, just the, 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 the onion, the, the mushroom, the, the beef broth, the beef all together, the wine. You can taste a little hint of the wine in there as well, along with that beef. I'm telling you, these flavors marry so well with this recipe. It's fantastic. You see how wonderful that looks. That is a fantastic dinner for anyone to make. And it's very easy. You just put a few recipes, put a few ingredients in like I just did earlier, set it, do your stuff, come back, do the second part with the sauce, set it for a little bit more, and you're all set to go. Make those egg noodles in the process. It's as easy as that. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, well, that is it for this episode of the Chef Ron Locke Show. I want to thank Smokey Harley Davidson for coming on today and helping us with our ingredient presentation and letting you all know what we were going to be making today. I also want to thank each and every one of you out there, as I always do, for viewing, tuning in, checking me out, checking the show out, and uh, thanks, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to do this, that's for sure. Or I'd be preaching to the choir myself, <laughs> one of the two. So at any rate, thank you so much out there, and uh, make sure you tell all your friends, family, and loved ones out there about us. And uh, let's, uh, let's hopefully we can keep increasing the family here on the Chef Ron Locke show, all right? All right. That's it. This is Chef Ron Locke saying to you all out there, let's keep heating up that kitchen and let's get cooking. And we'll see you next time.